Today's video is gonna be the most standard PC hardware video I think I've ever done on this channel. I'm gonna walk you through how to build this PC over here. If you haven't seen the first part of this video where I build this PC and compare it to the worst pre-built I think I've ever seen, go check it out in the description below so that you can see why I chose the components that I did and so on and so forth. In today's video, we're just going to have a look at how to build this PC. Also, if you're interested in joining Team David for your folding at home, check out my Discord for more details linked in the description below. This guide is going to be fairly condensed, so if you are following along at home, I would pause after each instruction and then do the thing at your own pace. And with that, let's get into building a computer. The first thing that I like to do before I get started with any build is to make sure that my desk is nice and clean and that I have my favorite screwdriver at hand. And then if you want to be really professional about it, you can also have a little screw tray so that you don't have everything just spread around on the desk. And then after that, I also like to double check that I have all of the correct components. So just kind of lay them out on the desk to make sure that you have everything that you need for your build. So this includes your CPU, APU, graphics card, whichever combination of that you have, and then your motherboard, RAM, uh, an SSD, and that you have your case and your power supply all ready and easy at hand so that you don't have to look around for a bunch of crap. First things first, unbox your power supply, set it down on the desk next to you, kind of out of the way, Plug your power supply in and make sure that the power connector is flipped off. Now, the reason that we do this is so that we have a grounding point to get rid of any kind of static electricity that we build up through moving while building the PC. So every time you kind of shift around, just touch a metal part of the power supply to make sure that you're grounded. Now, the next step is to make sure that all of the components that you're going to use for your build works before you build it into your case, because there are very few things worse than trying to power up your PC for the first time and realize that you've got a DOA component. At that point, you have no other choice but to commit Harakiri. How we go about doing this is you take your motherboard out of your motherboard box, making sure to also grab a SATA cable while you're there for your SSD. You lay your motherboard down on the box and then you socket your CPU. This is really easy to do. All you do is you line up the golden triangle on your CPU with the triangle on the socket. You then lift up this little socket arm and then gently place the CPU down into the socket and then just gently put the little arm down. For this process, like everything else in life, consent is key. If you have to put any force anywhere, you're doing it wrong. The next step is to install the CPU cooler. First, you have to unscrew the stock plastic retention clips. And then because we're using the stock cooler, thermal paste is actually pre-applied, so you don't have to worry about it. You just gently lower the cooler down. And then to actually tighten down the cooler, you do two rotations per side going in an X pattern over the cooler. Try not to over tighten the cooler. Once it feels sturdily tightened, it should be fine. After doing this, you need to plug in the fan cable of your CPU cooler into this slot over here. The next step is to install the RAM. Now different motherboards may have different slots that you need to populate first, so just check in your manual to make sure that you're using the correct RAM slots. Next, you need to unclip the RAM slots that you need to use, and then align the RAM sticks using this little notch. Once you've lined the RAM stick up with the socket, push down on the RAM stick until the clips close themselves. This process may feel a little bit like you're putting too much pressure on the motherboard. Don't worry too much about it. Although if you're really needing to put your back into it, maybe you've aligned something incorrectly. Considering that we don't have a dedicated graphics card in this build, we don't need to do too much more preparation work. All you need to do is plug in your SSD using a SATA cable, plugging it into your motherboard, and then a SATA power cable going from your power supply. So you plug the SATA cable into this port on your motherboard. And then finally, you just need to hook up the power connectors by plugging the 24 pin motherboard power connector into this port over here. And then the eight pin CPU power connector into this port up here. And now we're ready to test all of our components and see whether they work. Now, because we're working with a budget motherboard, unfortunately to actually switch it on without the power button on our case, we're gonna have to do something dodgy with a screwdriver. 
So you take the tip of your screwdriver and then find the front panel connectors on your motherboard. When you're there, look for the plus and minus pins for the power connector and then jump that with the tip of your screwdriver. After you've jumped the power on your motherboard, your CPU cooling fan should turn on, and if the motherboard that you've chosen has any lighting, that should also turn on. If your PC repeatedly turns off and on again, it means there's probably something wrong. And if you want to be 100% sure that everything's working, plug a monitor into your PC and see if it gets to the point where it asks for valid boot media. Now that we've established that all of our components are working, good job by the way, <laughs> wow that was, that was cheesy even for me. But what we need to do now is move all of these components into our case. Now first off, we prep our case by taking it out of the box, uh, taking all the side panels off and standing it upright. I like to start by putting the power supply in the case. So you take the power supply and just slide it into the basement from the back, making sure that the fan is facing down to the intake in the bottom of the case. Don't worry if you have to struggle with the cables a bit, it's often a bit of a struggle getting a power supply in a case. And then you screw four of these screws into the back to secure the power supply. Considering the fact that we're working with the Thermaltake H17, cable management is actually going to be really easy because of this massive basement. So for now, just leave the power cables in, in the basement there. The next step is to put in our rear I.O. shield. Now for this, I like to lay the case flat down and then just kind of pop it in. This process may be a bit of a struggle, but just persevere. It'll, it'll get in there eventually. It should fit. And then before we lower our motherboard in, we just want to make sure that we have all of the correct motherboard standoffs in the correct spots. Most cases come with them pre-installed, but just check your manual to make sure that the standoffs are in the correct spot for the motherboard that you're using. After you've done this, you need to gently lower your motherboard down into the case. Now while I'm doing this, I usually like to aim this part of the motherboard for the rear I.O. and then gently lowering it down onto the standoffs. Once the motherboard is touching the standoffs, make sure to not move it around too much and too violently because you may scrape the motherboard on the standoffs. Uh, but once you have it aligned, you can screw it down using these little screws. And there we go, it's starting to look like a real PC now, isn't it? Now the next step is the part of building a PC that I dislike the most. We have to connect the front panel connectors. It's usually this loose, jumbly mess of little connectors. Now what you do is you bring these cables through, again, this hole on the basement of the power supply, and then matching the little cables to the correct ports that they need to go into, usually by referring to your motherboard manual, you can struggle for about 20 minutes to get those into the correct place. And then we need to plug in the front USB 3, which again is a connector I don't really like. It's, it's all huge and not very malleable. But you can lead it up through this hole in your basement and then plug it into the USB 3 connector on your motherboard. And then finally, we can do the same for the front panel USB 2 and the front panel audio header. Just make sure to read the labels on your motherboard using the correct port for the specific cable. The next step is to install the SSD. Depending on what case you have, they, it may have different mounting options for your SSD, but it's usually four screws that secure it to the case. And then again, you can plug the SATA power and the SATA data cable into, into the SSD. After doing this, route the SATA data cable uh, around the basement and bring it up from the bottom to your motherboard so that you don't have to see that cable. The next step is to plug the case fan in. There's usually a header on the motherboard right next to the fan, so this is quite easy. And then if you want to hide the cable, I usually stick it in here between the I.O. of the motherboard and the actual case fan. Now at this point, we're almost done. All we really need to do is plug in the 24-pin motherboard power and the 8-pin CPU power. The easiest way to do this is to bring the cable through the motherboard tray hole closest to the port that you need to use, plug it into the motherboard, and then pull the rest of the cable back behind the motherboard tray. Be careful not to pull too hard to put any unnecessary tension on your motherboard. Now do this for the 24 pin and the 8 pin CPU power, and then you should have all the power you need for the components in your system. If you have a graphics card, you may also need to use supplemental power for that. And now we've gotten to the point where we can actually cable manage. Now with this case, it's really easy. If you're a beginner, you shouldn't worry too much about cable managing the back. Uh, just make sure that there's enough space for the rear panel to actually fit on. But most of the excess cables can just fit in the basement of the case. 
And just like that, we should have a functioning PC. Now the next step is to actually plug it in and make sure that it boots in its current configuration. Be sure to turn on your power supply switch because I have often had a mini heart attack because, well, the system didn't turn on, although it was just due to the power supply not being turned on. And then the final step is to install Windows. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. This is pretty easy to do. In fact, if you're using a USB stick, Windows actually has a USB boot drive creator on their, on their website. If you want to download Windows through there, they'll make it for you. And then you can plug it into your PC, switch it on, and then follow the steps to actually install Windows. If your PC doesn't launch straight off the USB Windows boot drive, go into your BIOS and set the USB drive as the first boot priority. If you don't have a Windows key, I usually go, I guess, the fairly dodgy route of buying Windows key off of eBay sellers. I've never personally had an issue. All you need to do is make sure that the seller has good ratings. And just like that, we have a finished PC. That wasn't too hard, was it? It's actually a really easy process to build a computer. Everything has a hole that you just kind of need to stuff it into. If you have any questions, just post a comment down below. I'm sure somebody would be willing to help you, even if I don't get to the comment. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, share it with your friends, check out all of the social media linked in the description below. And until the next video, bye-bye.